Welcome back to the channel. It's Monday. It's time to talk about the worst comic book of the week. Today, we're talking about Adventure of Superman, John Kent, number three. And here with me, as always, is Doc. How you doing, buddy? I'm awake, but I'm pretty sure this comic, this is like comic book Ambien. The lack of self-awareness of Tom Taylor within this comic book, and we'll kind of get into it because there's actually not a plot. There's not an actual story. It's kind of weird. But he's basically saying that, uh, you know, maybe the ends don't justify the means in all situations. Yeah. Like, I, I got partway through this comic, and I'm like, does he understand the, the story he's telling here? Not really the story, because there isn't a story. But does he understand the, uh, the message he's putting across here? Because I don't know if he does. Tom Taylor might be the next Ben Shapiro, is what I'm saying. Uh, is he yeah. the next Tucker Carlson? Um, no, is he because gonna be on Fox News, what's going on here? No, no, because, um, you know, Tucker and Ben can occasionally be funny. Humorous would never be uh, an adjective to describe Tom Taylor in any situation. So well, certainly you know. not in this comic book. There's a couple of attempts at jokes here. They all fall flat. We're not going to get into that so much because I think there's a little bit more meat on the bone to talk about here. Let's start out with the art from Clayton Henry and Clayton Henry's a pretty good artist. He's done some really good stuff over the years. But this is the most basic bitch Clayton Henry art I've ever seen in my life. Everything is so flat. There are a couple of moments of action within the comic book, and they look better than the rest. But even those don't look good. I am a big fan of Clayton Henry. In fact, out of the three Claytons that I can think of in the comic book industry, he is my favorite. I like him better than Clay Man. I like him better than Clayton Crane. But if he could have found a more boring way to, to frame this comic book, I don't know if it's possible because he really put in about zero effort here. I was so disappointed. You know, that's the only thing that I was looking forward to in this comic book. When I saw on the cover that it said Clayton Henry, I'm like, oh, cool. At least I'm going to get art that I like. We got some really, really phoned in shit from him that is terribly disappointing because I love his art. No, almost no imagination whatsoever when it came to like the layouts of the comic book. Everything is just as basic. As you could get. If they made a comic book that said, this is how you lay out a comic book in the most boring fashion possible, that's what he used as a template for this book. Everything was straight on. Everything was was flat angles. Everything was framed with the camera pointing directly at, like, straight onto the face of all of the characters in there. I almost fell asleep just looking at the art. I'm like, can you fucking do something here, man? There are only a couple of pages of action in. Once again, John Kent never throws a punch. He only stops someone from throwing a punch one time. There's about three pages of action, and it is bland as hell. I mean, it's literally just all people standing around talking, talking and talking and talking. It's one thing to info dump and, and tell me what the plot is supposed to be, but this is just vague innuendo of, of nothingness and complimenting John Kent. Well, you mentioned the plot, so let's move on to the plot by Tom Taylor. And I would love it if you could explain to me what the plot of this comic book is. I know what the point is, and we'll get to that, but what's the actual story plot itself? John goes to two places and sees what a world run by Superman looks like. Yes, he's That's getting it. a tour of the, the the universe of injustice. That's not really a plot. That's a background. That's a setting or something like that. But there's no real plot to this comic book, and I think that's really the big failing of this. When they announced this miniseries, it was supposed to be John Kent finally fighting Ultraman, you know, crime syndicate Superman that had tortured him so many years ago and aged him up and he lost his childhood with his father. He was finally going to confront him and defeat him in this miniseries. Well, that shit already happened. It's a six issue miniseries. We're on issue three. It happened in issue two and John Kent didn't even do it. It was Injustice Superman that ends up stopping Ultraman. So there's no real point to the comic book anymore, and you can see it with the plot that is non-existent throughout this comic book. It's just him kind of discovering what the Injustice world looks like and realizing there's another version of his father out there. This is just Tom Taylor admiring his own work on Injustice. All he can do is go, hey, and by the way, remember I did Injustice? Everybody liked it. It was Injustice. People liked it. That's what made me Tom Taylor. It's kind of weird. I feel like um, he doesn't think of Injustice Superman the way I do, that he's like an evil, tyrannical Superman. He really tries to make him ultra sympathetic in here. Benevolent dictator Superman <laughs> instead of 
Um, He's the good Hitler. Yeah. Benevolent tyrant Superman is somehow a step up from crime syndicate of America Ultraman. They're two sides of the same fucking coin. You, you killed the bad guy and then you replace him with virtually the same character because you had nothing else to do and you're just like... Because he's the injustice guy and it's his, his thing. I think it's all about what Tom Taylor... You know, he wants to revisit injustice so he's reminding us that he did that. I think that's the plot of the comic book. Not a plot, but whatever. I guess the thing we're supposed to like about this is we do see this other version of Damian Wayne in the Injustice world, and he and John Kent, like, get together, so it's another Super Sons reunion. I am so fucking tired of Super Sons reunions. If you like the Super Sons, if you wanted to keep publishing Super Sons, just keep publishing Super Sons. Don't ruin the character and move on to something else. And now they can't do anything with John Kent. So all they can do with him is go back to fucking super sons. That pretty much covers it perfectly. They they realize that they're in a catch 22 here where they can't de-age John Kent and, and continue super sons, but they also don't have anything to do with John Kent. That isn't super sons. So they just keep putting him in situations where it's member berries for, Hey, remember super sons. And look, it's John and Damien together. Remember Super Sons? That's all that they're doing. If you look at the John Kent story within Action Comics, it's a prequel story where they're the Super Sons again. And guess what? Recently, another issue of, uh, was it Action or Super? I can't remember which one. Guess who we got to see? The Super Sons from the future again. They played this uh, chance encounter over and over and over the past three or four years that I'm pretty much done with it. I don't want to see Super Sons ever fucking again. I'm done with it. You ruined it already. Stop reminding me. At this point, is it really actually helping in any way? Or is it causing people that same sort of like visceral reaction of, hey, you know that thing that you're trying to member berries me with and, and trying to get me to like this character all aged up and gay now by saying, hey, look, we'll give you a little taste of Super Sons. At this point, there's probably a lot of people that are so disgusted by it that you keep teasing us with the thing that we know we're never going to get ever again. Th they leave. Speaking of things that we'll never, ever get to see, the point of this comic book is for John Kent to get to the injustice world, find out that this alternate evil version of his father ain't such a bad guy, and explore the world where in this world there is no climate change crisis. It's already been solved by Superman. In this world, it sounds like there's no religion. It was already expunged by Superman. In this world, there's no crises. There's no wars. Everything that John Kent would like to happen in Earth Zero has actually already happened here because of Superman, the injustice version of Superman. Now, what he's saying is, in order to achieve all this, is you have to take the will and freedom from people and have them live in, in tyranny to actually achieve this. That's that's exactly where he's going. Hey, since this is just a call back to volume one of John Kent Superman, where he was sitting there berating his dad for not doing enough, and he was just activist Superman the entire series, the only thing that would actually surprise me is if it caused John to reevaluate what he was asking for in volume one. Instead, I'm almost guaranteeing because it is Tom Taylor, that he decides he can do it and get the same results with just slightly less tyranny. This is showing John Kent, not telling him why his father never went to these extremes to take over the world and fix it because he would become a tyrant and people would be afraid of him. So you've actually done a great job demonstrating why Superman has never done this. John Kent realizing that with his powers comes great responsibility. But you and I know he's not going to change as a character like that. He's going to realize what Injustice Superman has done is correct. He just did it the wrong way. And Tom Taylor, his mandate is to make John Kent a, a separate character from Superman, because if they if he came to the realization at the end of this, that the things that he was wanting to do, the activist Superman approach only leads to tyranny. And maybe he shouldn't do that. And he should take a step back and let the world decide what it wants and save it when it goes too far that would be just making john kent into teenage clark kent and there's no point in the character existing well he's bisexual superman that's the point of the character now i don't think it's it's that deep anymore doc 
Uh, you could be right. I mean, now there's always the slight possibility. This at the end turns Jonathan Kent into essentially Superboy Prime, an evil Superman that decides. What if it red pills him? I yeah, I think that would require Tom Taylor to get red pilled, and that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, that's not true. Alan Moore is a bleeding heart liberal, and he wrote quite a few red pilled characters. Absolutely, you are a hundred percent right. And Tom Taylor is completely incapable of separating himself from the characters he writes because Superboy is just Tom Taylor's fantasy self insert. Well, you're probably right on that. He certainly can't sniff Alan Moore's jock strap, let alone carry his, his uh, water when it comes to writing comic books. I personally think that he doesn't even realize what he was saying with this comic book, and he didn't mean to do that. I think that was an oopsie, Doc. Him actually making a good point and highlighting or just flagging that John Ken is going to understand you actually can't be a tyrant. People need to be able to make mistakes, and you can't fix everything. He's going to realize there's a better way to do it. He's going to end up at the end of this book realizing, hey, I can be a more benevolent dictator because that's the only outcome that's possible. I personally have had issues with Tom Taylor's version of John Kent Superman from day one. Never really had anything to do with him coming out as the gay Superman. Obviously, six or seven issues into the run itself. I talked about it from the beginning. He's destined to become super tyrant, not Superman, because Tom Taylor is an absolute idiot and he doesn't know what a hero actually looks like. If you haven't seen this, I said it from day one. There's also a link in the video description.